Hello everyone, welcome to my Soap's official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Wednesday, October 4, 2023. Today on The Young and the Restless Sharon Gives Nick Advice, Lily takes problem with Mamie's ideas, and Adam realizes Sally still loves him. A crimson lights, Sharon and Nick chat up their successful business trips, but she observes he appears odd and wonders what's going on. Nick tells her he's good, but then acknowledges he's not that good. Sharon can see he wants to punch a hole through the wall right now. Nick doesn't want to get bogged down in personal issues. They're business partners. Sharon tells him they were married and are still good friends. Tell me what's going on. What happened? Nick relents and informs Sharon that while he was away, Sally had supper with Adam. Afterward, Adam walked her to her room and kissed her. Sharon cringes. Oh, Adam. Nick rants that he's sick of it. Sharon wonders what he'll do about it, and don't tell me you're going to confront Adam. Nick won't because he'd rip off one of his arms. He wants that son of a bitch gone and out of everyone's life for good. Sharon doesn't condone what Adam does, but love is love, and they can't just turn it off as much as they'd like to sometimes. Nick believes that Adam doesn't love Sally, he just wants her like a trophy. Sharon disagrees and believes the only way the kiss matters is if it somehow emotionally touched Sally. Nick hangs his head. Sharon asks, did it? Adam follows Sally into the club wondering what occurred in the park. Sally doesn't want to discuss anything and encourages him to give Nick some space and he'll cool off. Adam wants to know where he and Nick stand. Did you tell him that I kissed you? Is that what set him off? Sally worries if he's attempting to stir up trouble and asks him to leave it alone. Adam has to know where he and Nick stand since he's attempting to restore his connections with him and the rest of his family. Sally sighs, come on Adam, you and I both know that is a complete lie. Adam asks why she's saying it's a lie. Sally informs him that despite what he said, everything he said and done over the previous couple of months indicates he can never change. He can't let her go. He can't let go of Newman Media. And he can't let go of his hatred at his father. You refuse to stop blowing things up. At the Chancellor Estate, Abby's tidying up when Divin walks in wearing a suit. She admires his look and he tells her Mamie invited them to the jazz lounge. He's hoping she'll disclose she's the mystery investor and explain why she's kept it a secret. In her penthouse, Lily has a favor to ask Daniel. She asks him to be her date to the club, where Mammy has invited them. You're part of Chancellor Winters, so you should be there. She also wants to show Mammy how happy he makes her. Daniel has a meeting he's already canceled three times. In the near future, they'll get together with her aunt and show her how pleased they are. Lily agrees and they embrace. At Newman, Nate tells Victoria to put her pencil down, it's quitting time. He wants her to accompany him to a family get-together held by Aunt Mamie. Victoria understands this will include Lily and Devon and says, are you trying to go to war with them again? She doesn't think it's a good idea for her to come with him to a family gathering. His cousins aren't her biggest supporters. Nate ensures that they have too much respect for Mamie to cause a scene. This gives him another chance to heal wounds with his cousins. Victoria knows he wants that. He reminds her they're in a relationship and it's past time she becomes part of his family. In the jazz lounge, Jack gushes to Mamie about how pleased it makes him to see her gorgeous and on top of the world. Jack wonders if she'll fill him in on what she's up to this evening. Mamie feels she's a lucky woman with two families. She will always appreciate the Abbots, but now she has to focus on creating a relationship with Nate, Lily, and Devon. That's why she has to take certain actions to properly reconnect with them. Jack tells her she's driving him crazy with this mystery and implores, come on. Mamie relents and informs Jack that she bought out a private investor and now has a big position in Chancellor Winters. If everything works well, this is just the beginning. Jack is happy for her and marvels at her financial prowess. She says she learned from observing John. Jack is thrilled that it's all led her full circle back to Geno City. Mamie informs him Victor is the private investor she bought from, and Jack thinks it to be such excellent news. He just hopes she's prepared for the hurdle ahead. Mamie quips, let's face it, who can prepare for Jill? Mamie chortles that when Jill finds out how successful she's gotten as an investment it will take her over the top. 
Amused, Jack adds, not as much as finding out you're the mystery investor. Mamie says her money is as good as Victor Newman's. Jack warns her reasoning doesn't always apply with Jill. He wants to know what else she has up her sleeve, but Mamie tells him her guests are approaching sorry Jackie. Jack leaves the club after telling Mamie that he and Diane are preparing their wedding party tomorrow. Mamie admits Diane has turned her life around and is looking forward to the celebration. Nate and Victoria go in, where Lily is scrutinizing them from the bar. She rolls her eyes when Mamie takes them away to show Victoria a snapshot of Nate as a newborn. Lily flashes to telling Nate that him dating Victoria is a slap in her and Devin's faces. Snapping out of her trance, Lily grins half-heartedly at Devin and Abby as they approach. At Crimson Lights, Nick informs Sharon that the kiss affected Sally more than she wants to acknowledge. He appreciates Sharon for listening and for talking him down. Sharon's always willing to help a friend keep from dismembering his sibling. Nick grins, it's one of the qualities that first attracted me to you. At the club, Adam knows what Nick thinks of him, but he believed he and Sally were in a better position. Sally asks, better than what? They're pals, but he had to spoil everything by kissing her. Adam apologized for that. Sally tells him he stated he didn't regret it. Adam still doesn't. It was an impulsive moment between them. Sally says it was more than that. She was just getting her life in order again, and thanks to that reckless moment it's all teetering again. Adam recognizes she's not talking about Nick's reaction the kiss, you're talking about yours. Sally accuses Adam of not trying to heal relationships, but instead twist them into what he wants. She warns him to keep away from Nick and her. She did tell him about the kiss, and it did affect him. Adam knows Nick extremely well. Him kissing her didn't disturb him that much, it's more than that. He would only be unhappy if the kiss elicited some emotional reaction from her. Sally warns him to keep out of her life and out of her head and storms up the stairs. In the jazz lounge, Mamie thanks everyone for coming, I feel as if I'm in a dream, standing her in Geno City, my home for so many years, in the Neil Winters jazz lounge. She chokes up telling how much she's missed them. Mamie is aware of their ups and downs and some of the hatred and animosity that's been happening between them as well. It hurts her heart and Olivia's too. Drew and Neil are looking down with broken hearts as well. She vows to return to Geno City to whip them into shape and make this family the powerhouse it was before and that it shall be again. In her apartment, Sally paces and sighs. She thinks back to Nick, stating Adam has a grasp on her and maybe always will. She pulls up her phone and contacts Nick. In crimson lights, Nick realizes that Sally is calling. Sharon tells him he should take it and moves away. Nick answers and tells Sally he's with Sharon working. Sally knows he's not okay and claims she's not either. She wants to discuss things out and is amazed he can work right now. He says Sharon's quite good at grounding him. Sally snarks, remind me to thank her. Nick believes she's right and they need to chat, I'm on my way. He disconnects and exchanges a look with Sharon. In the jazz lounge, Mamie aims to reconcile this family from the inside. She has purchased a big investment in Chancellor Winters from a mystery investor. Devin doesn't think it's a secret. They know it's Victor. Mamie hopes they're as excited as she is that she will be intimately tied to the future that Lily and Devin are establishing in remembrance of two of their most exceptional family members, Catherine Chancellor and Neil Winters. They all lift their glasses— Mamie tells Nate they all know he's in deep at Newman Enterprises, but it would give her great joy to draw him away and rejoin them at Chancellor Winters. Victoria frowns and Lily gops, excuse me. Did you just say, rejoin us? Nick walks into the club, sees Adam, and flashes to Sally telling him in the park that the kiss left her with a mixed emotion since she could see how much suffering Adam was in. He walks over to Adam in the bar and tells him, you need to stop this. You need to leave her alone, for Sally's benefit, mine, and undoubtedly for yours. His patience has a limit. Adam says he's right. What he did was wrong, and he wants to apologize truly to him and Sally. Nick knocks on Sally's door and she allows him in. He says, just saw Adam downstairs. He maintains he didn't put a hand on him. But he warned him that he is going to leave her alone. Sally's sure he didn't take that well. Nick says he did. He knows he screwed up and apologized to both of them. Nick doesn't believe it, he's simply trying to get him to let his guard down. Sally says Adam is going to do whatever Adam's going to do, 
but the only thing she cares about is the reason she wanted to see him. Nick asks, what's that? Sally simply genuinely wants to know if they're okay. Nick doesn't know. That depends on her and what's in her heart. I want to know the truth, no matter what it is. Sally wipes a tear and continues, the truth is that I'm falling in love with you too. She rushes herself into his arms. Nick doesn't look convinced. Adam greets Sharon at Crimson Lights. She claims they're closed. He saw her automobile, so he decided he'd stop in and say, hi. He wonders if there's anything he can help her with. Sharon says he can explain her why he has to mess up everything for everyone else. Adam guesses she spoke to Nick and can only image how he spun things. I'm guilty as charged, I crossed the line. Sharon agrees and feels horrible for Nick. Adam does too. He's fooling himself. Sharon, Sally's not in love with Nick. Sally still loves me. In the jazz salon, Mamie tells her guests that she knows Nate left Chancellor Winters under less than ideal circumstances, but she's hopeful they can leave the treachery and mistrust in the past where it belongs, and that we can invite Nate back to rejoin us in our family's company. Lily isn't convinced that's possible and is bewildered by Mamie using the word us. She bought an interest in the company from Victor, however she's making it sound like she'll be a vital part of it. What exactly are your intentions at Chancellor Winters? Suddenly, Jill's voice booms out, yeah, I'm really fascinated about that myself. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.